will he play and what's wrong with him or what's not wrong with him? No, nah, Rob play. He's fine. He's just uh, getting through the end of pre-season. It's been a long pre-season for him. He's, he's in really good shape and I suppose he's just uh, wanting to make sure he stays in really good shape for round one. Look, if there's any, any risk with any of our players for this round, we wouldn't take that chance, but Rob will play. Tell us a little bit about the, the foot niggle that he's had for the last week or so. Basically, he got, um, got a little kick in his foot and that's as open as I can be and there's nothing much wrong with him other than he just wants to make sure it's absolutely pristine for the start. I think you're going to trim your team from 26 down to maybe 23. Do you have any, can you enlighten us as to who that is going to be going out there? No, what we'll do is we'll play no more than 23 at any one time, but all the squad will be available to play throughout the day. So again, if we want to manage some people, we may bring other people in after half time. So there's no one actually at this stage that we'll say won't play. Brad Ebert? Yeah, Brad will play. On, yep. on Ebert there, what about his confidence at this stage? Like, you know, he's still playing with the, with the head piece and um, 23s as well. Yeah, I suppose it's a, a, it's a reasonable question, but Brad's really comfortable with where he's at. And last week was a game because effectively Brad didn't play much football from round six last season. So we're actually giving him some more game time to make sure we get him in the best shape we can to make him available for us for round one. And that's, that's the planning around Brad. And you've left um, Laddams out of the team. Are you confident Lysett can you know, hold that position? And where will he get his help from, I guess? Yeah, certainly. Uh, look, we've got Westy out there. We've got Charlie out there. We've got Todd out there. We've got some plenty of tall people out there that can help out. But, but Scotty's the type of ruckman who actually needs to ruck for about 80% of a game. And that's, that's when we get our best results out of Scott. So we don't want to have two ruckmen. And in the last game of the, you know, the, tri- the pre-season series where we're 50-50, we need someone to get used to rucking. And Scott played in the All-Stars game uh, a week ago and didn't get a lot of minutes. So he needs a lot of minutes tomorrow. Is that a decision you sort of made over the off-season, Ken? Because I know you rucked Paddy and um, Scotty a lot last Last year in tandem, is that he needs to be a solo ruckman? A decision you've only just recently come to? No, no, no. We think that's 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 the best method for him, having had him here for 12 months. Uh, but we also know that Pete's an up and coming young ruck. But we also need both boys to be able to, to demonstrate that they can actually impact the game in the front half because that's where they've got to spend some minutes. Otherwise, we we're not going to be a team that can carry two ruckmen that can go 50-50 and have only three on the bench. So we're figuring out that if we can get one of them to play a little bit more forward, that will be a great option for us. How did Pete cop that after playing last week and well, everyone in the off season saying, oh, you know, you. you probably play a lot of the games this year. Pete's fine. He didn't play last week. He was sick. So he missed out on a game. So that's probably hurt him a little bit. And, uh, you know, so uh, we've got to the point today where we've got to make a decision on what we're going to look for for round one. And at this stage, it looks like Scott's in front. And Trent McKenzie, um, has he sort of leapfrogged, I guess, over um, a few of the defenders? Uh, no, not necessarily. He played last round of last season, so he's had a really good finish to last football season, and he's had a great pre-season, so he deserves his opportunity to be in, you know, as a part of the back six or seven that we've got down there at the moment. And speaking of the young guys, um, Georgiades, what where do you sort of see him this game? Uh, he'll play, so it'll be exciting again to see him play. He's only had the one game against Brisbane, and uh, you know, not another opportunity out there to show what he can do is, is really exciting for us. We've got. You know, a number of young players out in our side, so we're just looking forward to Mitch being one of those young boys that we see some more improvement out of. And we have to ask you about China. There's been those big changes this week. How does that change things for you? Oh, not too much. I mean, the good part for us is that we actually got some notice now and we know exactly what's going on, which the club kept us in the loop all the way through. So it's just a matter of working through it. Now we can get on to planning for what that, that game looks like. But I've got to be honest, um, it's a long way in my plans at the moment away from what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking really much a lot about this game here tomorrow and then absolutely all my thoughts are into round one. And Marble Stadium, what do you think about that decision? Oh, again, we play there all the time. It's not, a, not an issue to us. We're happy to play wherever we've got to play. Can you tell us about the belief in the group? We spoke to Hamish yesterday and he said he was more optimistic after what he's seen this pre-season and the Marsh Cup so far and what he's been in, in recent years. Do you feel that around the, the place and do you feel it in yourself? Yeah, absolutely I do. I, you know, I've, I believe that the group are in a really good position. We've, um, you know, we've had another pre-season together. We're, we're, we're a, a somewhat younger side, but we've also got some experienced players who are back this year that are in really good shape. And that gives you great optimism. And everyone who's supporting us at the moment would be looking at that, and, and, and obviously looking at the obvious ones. You know, looking at Charlie out there, looking at Hammer out there, looking at people who have missed a lot of football out there running around, and they then they get a little touch of the young people that are out there playing as well. So I think. Overall, if you could say we had a perfect pre-season, we've nearly had a perfect pre-season. Is that nice of you going to bed every night? You copped, all, copped it from everywhere last year. Is it nice of you having, at least at this part of the season, having that every night when you go to sleep? Yeah, it'd be nice if it stays like that for the next six months. I'd be really happy then. So the, the challenge of any football season is, is to survive collision. And for us, to, we haven't had too much of that to worry about at the moment. But you do need to start in a healthy position, and we are in that space right now. And Jackson Mead, where is 
he's right to go. He's, uh, you know, he, we were very cautious with him in the under-23s and we left him out because uh, he'd come off the back of a little hamstring injury. So we, we were very cautious with that. But he's, you know, he's got an enormously bright future, Jackson. And the sooner he, we get to play some more games, you'll see a pretty exciting player, I think. Can I just ask, sorry, one more on an individual. Jack Watts, uh, we heard, I think, on the radio this morning, he could be sort of another six, seven, eight weeks away from playing a game of footy. What, where's he at? No, I don't think that's the, actu- the accuracy that you need. I think Jack will be back and playing quite soon. He's had a little calf injury is what he's had. So he hasn't had anything major go wrong with his, um, his rehab. He's actually in really good shape. Two weeks ago, he was back playing football, so there would be no reason to suggest other than that he's got a little calf injury that he's getting over. He's back running now, so he should be fine by the time the season starts. Uh, Ken, how great is it to come to a town like Wyala and, and actually play a game here? Obviously, you have the community camp down here last year, but to come to a place where you've got a really big supporter in St. you've built it uh, must be great. To be yeah, to... look, it's fantastic for us to come here. I mean, we, we consider it's our 150th year. Port Adelaide's got great roots out here at Wyala as well, and now with the GFG Alliance as well, we, we're certainly stronger. So to come here and, and you look around, the ground's in magnificent condition. We're just so happy to be here and be a part of the community. That's Port Adelaide, that's who we are. We, we tend to spend a lot of time in the community. We come from the community, so we, we're going to enjoy our time here and hopefully have a good performance. I was going to say, uh, what are your thoughts on, on the ground here? Obviously, Council and um, the government put a lot of effort into you know, redeveloping this area. What are your, what are your thoughts? Oh, I couldn't be more pleased with what they've done. I think they've done an outstanding job. But what you do go, and I'm from country Victoria as well, so you go to these grounds and you see what the, the quality of the grass and the stuff that the boys get to run around on. This obviously takes a lot of effort by a lot of people in the community, and they all should get a big pat on the back, so well done. Do uh, you enjoy the sports society out at South Wyala? You got to um, talk to a few of the locals and that kind of thing. How did you like it? Yeah, it's good. It's always good for us uh, as, a, as an AFL club to come to the community and the country communities especially and spend some time here. You can see behind you the boys are signing autographs there now. It's just a great opportunity. We, we're lucky to do what we do and when we can share that with the country community, we love coming. And obviously the boys enjoy getting out to these schools and that kind of thing and really bonding and also doing like the Auskick uh, clinic. Uh, that must be a great opportunity for them. Yeah, they all started somewhere similar. That's the great thing with them. They all started at Auskick clinics themselves. They all come through the program, so they all understand it. So any chance they get to give back to that, I'm sure they're more than happy to come here and, and do those moments for the kids. Would you like this to be a regular thing, coming down here and playing a game each year? It's quite regular at the moment. We've been here the last couple of years to Wyala, so yeah, I think any time we get to come out. I mean, we've got, as I said, we've got a great connection to Wyala now through, through GFG as well. So we, I'm sure this won't be the last time we're in Wyala.